what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be exploring gestures in swift ui specifically we'll take a look at binding gesture states as well as actually using gestures so here i've got two circles with two gestures applied to it this uh, bottom one down here we have a long press when you tap it we see that our uh you know our circle scales up and it also changes color and then it bounces back down and then this other one, this pink one, we actually have a drag gesture tied to it where we can actually grab it and drag it around our whole view. And personally, the simplicity of how simple um, and easy it is to apply these gestures, especially this drag one, is pretty remarkable. So we'll take a look at putting all this together and then some. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so we can grow the channel together. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some awesome Swift UI gestures. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and give our project a name of Swift UI gestures. Of course, you wanna make sure your language is Swift and both your lifecycle and interface are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. First things first, we're gonna expand our window, hit resume on our preview on the right-hand side. Let me also go ahead and collapse this. And let's also change our preview device here with a modifier of a preview device. And we're gonna go with the iPhone 12 to be a little more up to date. Cool, so now we can talk about gestures. So Swift UI actually has a bunch of gestures built in and we're gonna go through long press and the drag gesture today, as well as maintaining gesture state with another property wrapper called, you guessed it, gesture state. So the first thing we wanna actually do is create a uh, UI element to perform a gesture on. And we're going to keep this simple. I'm just going to create a circle here and we're going to give it a frame with the width and height of let's say 150 by 150 with an alignment of center. I'm also going to go ahead and apply a foreground color of color dot blue to it. And we'll end up with this circle on the right hand side over here. That said, let's go ahead and create a long press gesture. So we can actually create it right here in our body. So I am going to say let long press gesture is going to be a long press gesture and you can create it just like that. And to actually apply this gesture to your element, the circle here, we can go ahead and use another modifier called gesture and we can just pass in the gesture directly. Now, one thing that we want to do is we want to somehow get the state out of this gesture of if, it, if the user is currently long pressing or not. And it's pretty simple to do that. What you want to go ahead and do is add a property up here, which is uh, going to be annotated with this property wrapper called uh, gesture state. And we'll go ahead and say uh, this is called is long pressed. And by default, it's going to be false when we you know, start up our app. Now what we can do is we can add a modifier onto this long press gesture, and I believe it's called updating. We're going to pass in a binding to that gesture state right here as a first parameter. And the second thing is a body that gives us our new value, the state that we're maintaining, and the transaction. Now we're not going to use a transaction, but what we can do now is we can say that our state is the new value. So you could actually go ahead and call this new value to be a little more explicit, but we're basically going to be assigning via this closure and updating if the user is currently long pressing or not. Now, what do we want to actually do on our view when the user long presses? So in our case, we're going to do a scale effect. And what we'll also do is we will uh, also change up the actual color of the image of the circle rather. So the scale effect here, we're gonna say if it's long pressed, we're gonna to scale to two. Otherwise, we're gonna keep a scale of one. And I'm also gonna go ahead and change the foreground color here. So we'll say, uh, if you're long pressing, we're gonna change this to be, let's say color dot orange. Otherwise, it'll be blue. And the last thing we wanna to do to make this look super fluid is we're gonna add an animation modifier on here, animation. And you can stick with the default one. We actually don't need this value parameter. So we can just do dot default. 
There's of course a bunch of different ones in here. You can use a spring as well. Maybe we'll stick with spring. But now that we have that set up, let's hit resume on the right hand side over here. And we of course will need to hit the play button to enter our live preview. And we'll see when we tap and hold it, it does this really cool spring animation where it gets larger and then it goes uh, back down to the blue smaller states. Now, what's going on here is basically we're long pressing and the gesture is picking up on it and it's scaling our uh, circle here as well as changing the color. But a long press doesn't, you know, it's not an indefinite gesture. Basically, once we long press it after about a second, it reverts to the, you know, the old um, original state of it not being long pressed. Now you can change the duration of the long press here with more modifiers. We're not going to get that deep into it in this video, but that's how you would utilize a long press gesture. Now let's do another example for a uh, dragging gesture, and we're going to drag around the circle. And it's pretty remarkable how simple it is to do that. We're going to first get rid of the scale effect here and the gesture and animation. We can leave uh, this long press here. We're just not going to use it. The next thing we're gonna create in here is the drag gesture. And just like the long press gesture, it is a drag gesture just like that. And this one's a little different where we need to um, not contain, not rather not get the gesture state out of it, but we wanna get the position to where the user has dragged. And we wanna hold that in a state on our view so we can pass it to the offset modifier of the circle to move it around. So it's gonna be a state and we're gonna say, this is var offset and it's gonna be a CG size. Now you might expect this to be a CG point, but it'll be a size and just bear with me here and we'll see why in a moment. Now on this drag gesture, we are going to use the modifier for on changed. And this gives us a closure and this gives us a value for the gesture and we can say in here self dot offset is value.translation. Now this will tell us the translation where the user has actually dragged via the gesture. Finally, we wanna apply this gesture to our circle. So we're gonna use once again, the gesture modifier with the drag gesture. Now this one, we also want to move it around. So before this gesture modifier, I'm gonna add a offset modifier and we're gonna move around the X and Y position based on the offset dot width and offset uh, dot height. Now you could use the X and Y as well, but the reason we use width and height is so it uses the circles uh, center. There's also, uh, so you'll see there's a bit of a glitch as we go and run this in a moment. What you'll actually want to do in your real app is you want to get the starting point. So I believe there is a uh, something called a starting point on here or location start. There's a location, which is a point, but you can also get a location uh, start in here. And you wanna basically add in how much the user has dragged from the starting position. But anyways, we're gonna stick with this basic example. And the last thing we're gonna do is add a modifier for a uh, animation. We'll stick with default, which uh, SwiftUI should be kind enough to pick up on, uh, on its own for us. So let's go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side. I'm gonna grab my circle and we're gonna start moving it around. And what you can see here is that we can drag this guy all around our screen, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of this. So if we drop it, you'll see it drops there. But the glitch is if we start moving it around again, you'll see that it starts moving it from the original position. Um, so what you need to actually do is maintain the starting position. Um, and there is another modifier of on end in here, on ended rather and you get the value of the uh, actual gesture. So you can retain the starting position of wherever the user stopped dragging. Uh, we're not gonna do that like I mentioned, but yeah, there you have it. That's how you can use gestures in your SwiftUI views pretty trivially. Um, they're pretty simple to do. You basically de declare a gesture here, you add the modifiers to get the state out of those gestures and bind them to either a gesture state or a state or binding you know, any of the mechanisms you have in SwiftUI to retain state, and then you apply them to your views with the gesture modifier. And, uh, you know, more often times than not, you're going to want to also add the animation modifier to make sure that, uh, you know, everything looks really smooth as you apply the gesture. So 
That's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Leave any comments down below, questions, comments, concerns, feedback, video ideas. Love hearing from you guys. I try to reply to every comment within a few days. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy the video, if you're into iOS and Swift, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon to get notifications for when we post new content here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.